Hello and welcome to Coffee with the Councillor. I'm Mel Ashworth and today I'm speaking with Ian Porter. Hello Ian, welcome to the show. No problem, nice to be here. You're a Tory councillor, I believe. That is correct. Yes. yes. How long have you been a councillor? I've been a councillor now for uh, about 12 years. Okay. Um, on Western uh, Town Council when it was set up. Yes. And um, on North Somerset for that, back that period as well. So um, okay. I've got foot in both doors. Really. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Which ward do you cover? I cover on um, the Town Council, Warbury Ward. Yes. Um, and on North Somerset is Q-State Ward, which covers... Um, Four villages, basically, which is Puxton, Q-Stoke, uh, Wick St. Lawrence and Hewish. Ah, right. Okay. So we've got a vast area to cover. Yes, well, that is a big area, yeah. isn't it? Mm. And do you live locally? Yes, I live at Walbury. Oh, OK. Right. Yeah, do you probably. play golf up there? Well, funny enough, I think my house looks over, I think it's about 17th tee. So, uh, <laughs> but um, no, I can't play because of um, illness that I had oh. a, uh, years ago that I can't um, actually swing, shall we say, with oh, a club okay. properly now. Right. I could probably have a go, but it yes. um, wouldn't be, a, you know, a professional sport. That's a shame. Yeah, it's a it's nice a golf club. Golf, golf course. It's, golf course. It's, it's a good club, actually. So I, do, I am a social member up there anyway. So. Ah, right. OK. Yeah, so. so what do you do for relaxation then? Um, I'm a avid um, rugby supporter, um, ah. do a lot of rugby, Bath rugby. Yeah. Um, I'm going to Dublin when they play over in, uh, in the, towards Christmas time, ah, they play right. in Leicester, season ticket holder with Bath, and yes. we go away games and, uh, um, you know, England rugby as well, so Fabulous. Yeah, it's great too, and a lot of walking, yeah. I need to do a fair bit of walking as did, well. Did you time. used to play rugby? I used to play at school, yeah. you know, all different sports, as everybody do. Yeah. You know, and, uh, but I've found that I enjoy rugby. You yes, know, um, it is exciting. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, my dad was a big uh, footballer in Bristol at one time. So, what was his name? Uh, Ernie Porter, but he's about 92 now, so oh. nobody would know him, but he used to play for Bristol Boys oh, and, wow. uh, and um, Bristol Rovers at, oh, okay. uh, in the early days. That's but, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so. so you grew up with a sort of famous daddy? Well, I wouldn't say he was that famous, but he, you know, he, I mean, he was a, <coughs> he was well known around the Bristol area yeah. know, at the time, like you know, so it was good. Is that where you grew up in Bristol? Um, I was, yeah, I was born and bred in Bristol. Mm -hmm. um, lived in um, uh, Broomhill, Prison, to my, yeah. um, until I was about seventeen, then mm -hmm. moved to Weston. Oh, yeah. okay. So, had you left school by then? Yep. You must have done, yes. Yep. So, yep. what did you do when you came down to Weston? Um, well, what I was doing, um, I was doing an apprenticeship. Funny enough, um, in Bristol, uh, not earning a lot of money. Yeah. What um, were you doing an apprenticeship in? In um, mechanics. Yes. You know, I was doing <coughs> in Guilds Mechanics which was a, a four-year apprenticeship mm. um, with Brian Brothers, which is mm -hmm. a you know, commercial garage in mm. Bristol at the time. Um, then after um, starting off that, a lot of my friends are saying they're working in factories and earning probably three times what <laughs> I was earning. Um, but that was yeah. the nature of the game with apprenticeships. You know, you learn a skill. Um, so I topped it up basically by doing uh, a, a bread round with Lyons um, oh, right. Bakery on yeah. a Saturday morning. And, yeah. um, that's how I come to meet my wife in Weston. Really? How, how, on the bread round? Yeah, she was after me though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, so, very she funny. Was, no, she was, um, she, her family had a caravan park and uh, I used to deliver there and it's all sort of flourished from there. It all came from there. Mm. Oh, that's quite romantic. Yeah. Oh, so you've been married a long time then. 30, oh, um, I was 21, so it's wow. 31 years, 32 years now. Congratulations, yeah. fantastic. Mm. Got three grandchildren. Yeah. Three grandchildren? No children, just three yeah, grandchildren? Yeah, no, no, we got two children of our own. Yeah. yeah. yeah my son's just had a baby now, oh. little Tommy, who was born in um, uh, May time. May, so All the best birthdays yeah. are in May. Well, mine's in May, but... And um, mine. Yeah, so um, he was um, he was born just the end of April there. But oh, more, congratulations. Quite birthday, but, yeah. Fantastic, fabulous. Mm. So, um, what do you do then? What's your full-time job now? My full-time job Are is... Are you a mechanic still? No, no, no. I, 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 <coughs> uh, I was a mechanic for a few years. I, when I left Bristol, I moved from Brian Brothers to, mm. um, when I finished the apprenticeship, to um, Western Motors uh, in the, the Mercedes garage in the, yes. as a commercial mechanic there. Okay. Um, and then moved on from there up to Hell's Cakes in Clevedon, okay, which, cakes, is, which yeah. is where the new council building in Castle Mead is now. So really? It's quite ironic, really. <laughs> that, uh, so, full uh, circle. Yeah. yeah. So then, after a while, um, I, I joined the fire brigade. Oh, okay. Uh, and I was in a, Western? Uh, I was part-time in Western for about 14, 15 years. Right. And full-time then, I moved up to Bristol Airport. Oh, for okay. 10 years, so. 
So I had a, you know, quite a... Quite interesting. Quite interesting yeah. sort of job, you know, yeah. helping a community locally, you know, because that was all my free time, really, which was taken up with, um, you know, putting people's fires out or <laughs> rescuing people and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. So. But that was really good, really enjoyed it, and I'd probably still be doing it now if it weren't for illness. So. Oh, OK, yeah. OK, right. You still obviously got contacts in the um, I, fire brigade, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I've, I've been on the fire authority with the council, mm. which is great because I do know a hell of a lot of um, people still in the fire brigade. Mm. Still enjoy it, and I, I still got, you know, real interest in, mm. you know, that side of thing, helping people. They know, do a marvelous services. job, yeah. fantastic job. Yeah. yeah. What's this on your shirt then, uh, Ian? That Can you is. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah. The, um, <coughs> when I had to finish in the fire brigade. Um, it, it, it meant that I had to move into a new new sort of era, you know, because mm. um, I had to look for a job that I could um, do with my illness that um, I could cope with. Um, so I moved into um, training, um, which was um, driver training to start with. Um, driver training, can you just... Yeah, we, we train um, basically lorry, um, you know, your apprentices to get onto the ladder of... Uh, right. Um, you know, with a trailer, you know, they're not allowed to tow trailers now, so okay. we can put them through their tests like that, okay. through an apprenticeship, yes. now, which we're doing this year. Yes. Um, LGV, which is large good vehicle. Yeah. The lorries and the Arctics mm -hmm. and coaches as well, and mini buses. So. Right. So you train all these young people? We, we train a hell of a lot of people, yeah. Fabulous. Um, we've, we, we started the company about four years ago because yeah. um, originally... Who's we? Simon, um, Simon and Miss Al, Simon mm -hmm. Bershagen, he's the managing director mm -hmm. of the company. Um, we set up together on an equal basis, yeah. um, and um, that's how it's flourished. Within we started in his garage, believe it or not, wow. four years ago, and yeah. uh, and now we, you know, we're heavily involved with Western College, yes. um, doing a lot of training. Any other colleges, or how do not, you get the apprentices? Well, we, we do it ourselves purely. You know, we're an in independent company, and um, we, you know, we work within. We're moving into Devon and Cornwall at the moment yeah. because. Um, we're uh, well respected. We got accredited um, the centre within. Um, well, we're in offices in Black, uh, Backwell. Yes. Um, but around the area, we've got a you know uh, we've got a very good reputation and mm. probably um, what a big trainer for uh, driver CPC because every driver now needs to complete 35 hours of competence-based training. Right. Um, yes. It started um, about um, two years ago, yeah. uh, three years ago with coaches, mm. and, uh, and nobody started up doing it. We did. Right, so, so you jumped in there, yeah. So, you know, when you talk about um, two or three million drivers that got to be trained up in the country, yeah. then um, there's a lot of, um, lot of um, training needs there. Yes. And um, so we were one of the biggest um, you know, Fab trainers fabulous. In, in this area. Gosh. Never so knew it's, that. It's huge. <laughs> what would you say to young people, um, Ian, who are maybe thinking of getting into local politics or think they never could get into politics? Um, how would you inspire young people? Uh, I, I, I do believe that, you know, it's the interest. I mean, we on the town council, we've got a you know, youth council and everything yes. like that. Which is, And I know the college do a lot um, with youngsters as well to encourage, you know, people. There's courses that they can do now. That's a good well. word, encourage. Yeah, because the thing is, is mm. that, you know, you should never be forced down a route. But I think you've got to do it for the right reasons, you know. And the thing is, you've got to have an in interest in doing it as well. Yes. If you're not going to have an interest, then don't start in the first place because... You know, a lot of it is helping within the community, and there's a lot of um, a lot of good things that go on, fantastic things, which I learned when I was a mayor of you know, the town. Oh, um, you were mayor, were you? Yeah, I was the second mayor on the town council back oh, in nice. um, 2000, and I was the chairman of North Somerset a couple of years ago. So. How did you enjoy being mayor? Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah. You know, you just really see more. You know, all the really good things that go on. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, all the recognition of the people that. Um, you know, really, really work hard for nothing. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. Uh, but that's what I do. I yes, work for nothing exactly. on that. You know, I don't get paid for that <coughs> at all. Like, you know, what mm. I do on a town council over the last sort of um, 10, 12 years or whatever is it's all been, you know, my own time. Mm. Um, but I've enjoyed doing it. Yes. And supporting people, helping people. And yeah. So. yeah. And I think with the youngsters, like, um, there's there's a lot of things that they can get involved in, you know, locally, like, you know, to, mm. to feel as though that they're, they're part of the community yeah. uh, and making a difference. Yes. Exactly. You know, I think we've made a fantastic difference. If, if I'm honest, over the last sort of four or five years in, you know, in Western particularly, but in North Somerset in general, mm. it's not to everybody's um, agreement. We know that. Mm -hmm. 
You don't go into local politics to make friends and buddies well, and, and win favour. I, I, th I think that, you know, you're, you're there to help yes. as much as possible wherever you can, but you're there to make decisions. Yes. And some aren't popular, but that's what it's about. Some must be really hard decisions you know, uh, to make. Uh, you know, when you, you're talking of saving millions of pounds, yes. you know, and it's, you know, we all knew over the last sort of 15, 20 years that it couldn't go on. You know, things couldn't go on spend. You know, mm. uh, you couldn't go on spending without, um, you know, without it coming to a stop. And that's not just in this country. It is a worldwide thing. It's a global thing. But um, you know, you can't go back and say, "Well, I wish," you know, well, you know, we stopped it, you know, because it should have stopped a few years ago mm. and, and been thought out a little bit more. But um, now you're left there to pick up the pieces, and we'll do that. And I think we're still progressing really well locally. Right. I think we've done a hell of a lot in the town, and there's a hell of a it's lot. It's looking of fantastic. Well, there's some massive projects coming on now. Dolphin Square started yes. now, which is a great, you know, asset <clears throat> for, for for the town. Oh, for absolutely. West. You know, we we put a nice coastal trail through um, Western Woods. You know, that people can walk from Kewstone yeah. now and safely along the, the toll road, and it's been proved it's brilliant. Beautiful up there. You know, I did put in a bid for that with um, you know right. with the lottery the right. people's millions we were unsuccessful oh, okay but it still went ahead yeah that's the, you know that's what you've got to do you just yes. got to find other ways to do things and uh, yes. we're doing the same now with the um the leisure with the dome? well the leisure dome is another fantastic project that you know when it comes off because they're, they're looking at starting later on this year which would be brilliant you know Absolutely. and there's only five in the country this would be the biggest so, you know, wow. it'd be huge for the whole of the southwest. Absolutely, you know, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely massive. So what about Junction 21? One. Well, Junction 21 is a problem. But, you know, I've always said, you know, the thing is we worry too much sometimes about people getting out of Western instead of worrying about creating jobs getting within. Them in. yeah. You know, and the thing is, is that, you know, that's, that's, you know, we are moving in that direction now, but creating, <coughs> you know, it's all job, you know, um, led... Uh, you know, uh, building and, and development now within the, you know, within our community here, it which has is to great. Be really, doesn't it? You know, we're not going to be a big Bristol, we're not going to be a no. big London, but no. you know, the thing is, a lot of people do commute out for work. Um, yes, and so we, we need to keep them in here. Well, yeah. it's, it's much. It, we as can't much do it with everybody, no. but you know what we have, you know what we have done, and what we are doing is, is you know, moving that in that direction, which yes. is great. You know, because we can create jobs locally and we haven't got to worry about Junction 21, you right. know. Um, but there is going to be some changes at Junction 21 yes. and for the better, you know. Um, oh, it has to be, doesn't it? Exactly, you know. <coughs> um, but bearing in mind, it, it's not North Somerset's responsibility. Mm. It's the Highways Authority, mm. you know, which is the government um, authority. Everybody blames North Somerset or, you know, the, the council for... But it's not the responsibility mm. of, the, of the council. It is... A, responsibility of the government or the uh, highways agency so working alongside those people you know we need to create a better system there. yes we know that you know and we're doing it you know it will be done a yeah. better system of communication or well a better I, system of well i think everything you know i think right. it, over years like you know the, the highways agency can come along and just do whatever they want basically without any communication with north somerset i think that local knowledge is great knowledge you know so we know what we want to do there yeah you know? and uh, we've put forward now plans to hopefully you know you know um, create something which is going to work yes. on, on that roundabout and yeah I'm, I'm sure it will i'm sure it will okay. you know and i know it will happen yeah so, uh, yeah you, you know, watch this sure. space as i say we will we will yeah. um a question just before we finish mm -hmm. if you could invite three people to your dinner party who would they be who would they be? Um, well, Total change of tack now. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Just to find out, the people that have inspired you. Yeah, I, I mean, within my life, um, you know, there's been some fantastic people. Um, you know, uh, you could all talk about, like, Nelson Mandela. You can talk about um, people like that who have actually inspired over life, you mm. know, to bring to, to your house. I mean, I love, you know, I love sport. I love rugby and all that. So mm. I'd probably someone like Ian McGeekin, who's oh, okay. the, now taken over at Bath. Yeah. He'd be a great guy to have around for, yeah. for a pint. And, you know, and they'd be a, a, a good, uh, good, uh, good atmosphere. Well, a good atmosphere, good yeah. session. But... I also um, met quite a few of the royal family, which is oh, great. Okay. And I think that who, who have you met? The Queen twice, mm -hmm. um, Princess Royal, mm -hmm. a couple of times, um, Prince Edward, okay. Prince Andrew. 
So they're all great people that yeah. you've done a, good, a lot for the country. Like, and to have them around for a, a tea party would be great fun. You know, which, um, just to let her air down, I think, really, yeah. because I think sometimes they do. You know, and I think the Queen doing what she's done for all this amount of years, it's been fantastic. Yeah. You know, I mean, they do take a bit of a kick in now and again because it's not everybody's choice that, you know, we've got royalty in the country. But, you know, who would do what she's done for the past 50-odd years without, you know, there's not many people that could keep going at that sort of uh, level. You're right. At her age is even now. She's still fantastic. So I'd love the Queen come around for a cup of tea, you know. Be there we go. Sounds a good choice. Mm. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Not a problem. So that's, that brings us to the end of Coffee with a Councillor. And just to say thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time.